So first of all, uh, if you would describe chat control in a few words uh, in your own way, how would you describe it? Chat control means that the EU wants to oblige providers of communication services to search all private chats, messages, um, emails, even video conferences, online game uh, chats, dating chats, to search all that automatically for suspicious content, uh, generally and indiscriminately. The stated aim is to, <laughs> to look for uh, child sexual exploitation material and so-called child pornography. But the result would be mass surveillance uh, by means of fully automated uh, real-time uh, uh, messaging and uh, chat control. And the result would be the end of the digital uh, secrecy of correspondence. And okay, there is so more to the proposal. There is also ineffective uh, uh, network uh, level uh, 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 blocking. There is also the um, uh, screening of personal cloud storage. Uh, for example, private photos stored there. There is mandatory age verification, which would mean uh, potentially the end of anonymous communications. And there is also a, an exclusion of minors from app stores and installing uh, very common apps. All that is in the proposal. Um, so our Zoom call right now, that uh, should be monitored according to this proposal. This could be covered because um, it is uh, personal uh, communications and we could be um, distributing illegal uh, images or videos, yes. And you are a politician and I am some sort of journalist. Uh, that makes it a bit special. So, so even people like politicians, uh, priests, psychologists, doctors, etc., would be subject to this. There is no exception at all for uh, specifically um, sensitive communications. And you are right that even the victims of child sexual abuse rely on the confidentiality of their communications when they uh, receive the advice of counselors, when they are in therapy, when they um, are in self-help groups and discuss what, what happened among each other. All that will be screened as well. The provider doesn't know uh, what is the content of a conversation and, and who is uh, speaking. So there are no exceptions at all. Hmm. And um, in the proposal, uh, they are not specific on, on, on exactly how this is going to be done. That will be up to the respective uh, operator, right? Well, first of all, the providers themselves um, uh, design the algorithms that are used to look for the so-called known material. We have error rates of uh, more than 80% even for the so-called known material because the database that's used so far by US providers that voluntarily implement chat control seems to contain uh, innumerable uh, legal images and, and videos, for example, children on the beach or <laughs> in sports uh, groups, etc. And so we have a huge error rate, even for the so-called um, known material, meaning that um, hundreds and thousands of people are innocently being reported to the police. And um, if they don't uh, close the, the procedure right in the first place, uh, this may result in investigations, even if you're innocent, you will be suspected of um, uh, owning um, a so-called uh, child pornography. And that can have terrible uh, consequences. And it, it can happen easily um, because <laughs> it's sufficient to be received, to be a member of a chat group where somebody else posts this. Um, um, it is criminal to even uh, possess uh, such material. Mm -hmm. So either uh, you're completely innocent, the material is not criminally relevant, or it is criminally relevant, but you inadvertently received it. Or there are the cases where 
a persons don't realize this is criminal, especially young people. In Germany, more than 50% of investigations um, into possession of, of child pornography target minors, a persons under 18, um, because uh, they do sexting, because they um, often don't, they don't have the a sexual motivation when they find something funny, uh, some video funny, for example. And so it's very easy to, to be criminalized um, by this, even if you had the best of intentions. But that's not all. Uh, there is also uh, an obligation to look for yet unknown material. So they promise there are algorithms that would be able to tell automatically whether a photo shows um, a minor in a, a sexual uh, pose. And it's very clear that there are no reliable algorithms on that at all. And in fact, there is no transparency on these algorithms. There are a couple of, of companies that have uh, devised these algorithms, but nobody knows them because they, they keep them secret. Nobody knows the, the accuracy, reliability, and error rate. There is a huge risk that even with a low error rate, because of the, the millions of messages and photos that are sent every day, that there would be <coughs> thousands of people whose um, naked, uh, uh, whose nudes uh, would be exposed and uh, fall in the hands either of the company moderators who may review the results of these algorithms or fall in the hands of the um, US NECMEC Center or fall in the hands of the new European authority that's supposed to be doing the screening or fall in the hands of the national police who's supposed to deal with the flags that they have been uh, forwarded by this new EU center. So basically, even your most intimate uh, photos are no longer private, can be exposed to the wrong people. Maybe they want to make a bit of money and um, start selling them themselves. We know that um, from Edward Snowden that NSA staff have been circulating nudes for fun. And we know from a Google engineer, for example, that he's been using the company systems uh, for sexual uh, purposes himself. So this is prone to abuse. And then just to finish off, the third thing that they will require you to do is to use algorithms to detect potential grooming, meaning adults reaching out to children to, uh, uh, for sexual uh, purposes. And here again, they promise that there are algorithms out there that would be able to detect uh, text messages that aim at grooming. Uh, but here again, we know nothing of these algorithms. They are secret no evaluation of their um, uh, reliability. Most likely this will result in exposing um, very personal and intimate conversations that are completely illegal um, by algorithms that are simply completely um, unreliable. And then if this is going to, to be done in different way by different companies, does that for instance mean that um, um, the proposals that Apple had I think a year ago or something like that, that was withdrawn, that uh, that would be be um, applied again, uh, that form of technology in, in this case? Yes, Apple's proposal was actually more restricted because it would apply to um, search for known material and um, it would apply to cloud storage. So for images stored in the cloud. Uh, whereas the new proposal applies to any message, any photo or video that you send to, to somebody else using any service, um, including email, but also um, any stored um, any stored data that is uh, stored by another company. So not on your own device, but if it's in a cloud, if you upload it somewhere, um, in, in, a, in a file storage in, in Dropbox or whatever, Google Drive, um, all that would have to be screened, even if it's completely for personal uh, purposes. So this goes far beyond what uh, Apple envisaged and what met fierce protests, which is why I don't really understand why this new proposal uh, doesn't meet a, a, a protests that are much, much more, um, it should be far greater. Okay, so, so if, if companies like Apple and Microsoft and Google, et cetera, 
are going to, to inspect our the contents of our, our emails, then it means that, uh, as I suppose that it means that um, Europol will get access to this. I mean, in their new mandate, uh, uh, they are pointing out that they want to access or uh, that shall access uh, information and data from private companies. Yes, Europol has been given the power to request information from private companies and also to receive uh, information from private companies, including <laughs> the results of these chat control flags. In practice, most companies uh, generally basically just run these algorithms and then send any hits, uh, personal data and personal messages of, of um, any uh, a person where the algorithm thinks this might be a suspicious material. They basically send all of that to uh, the NECMEC and to the law enforcement without checking. And so um, there are millions of reports from, uh, from Facebook alone that can end up in the hands of authorities and the police. And if you're asking about Apple specifically, so if you use an iPhone, according to the proposal, first of all, all your messages would have to be screened, um, be it iMessage, be it WhatsApp, be it uh, by email or be it by any chat apps um dating app whatever gaming app all your messages would, would be screened and in case the algorithm says uh, um, this could be illegal um, it will you will be <coughs> reported and uh, secondly um, as to your personal photos and videos um, if you use the iCloud or, or Dropbox or some other service to back up your uh, uh, photos or to share your photos and videos they will be screened as well. Even if you only use it as a backup and never share with anybody, all that would be screened. If you have a photo or video on your device and you never, it never leaves your phone, then it won't be screened. But that's not, that's not usually why you, you take photos or videos. Okay, uh, one question that, that, um, that I often meet is, um, how will this play out when it comes to end-to-end -end encrypted messages? For instance, if I'm using GPG uh, in on my mail service and, and the recipient of my mails is also using GPG, what will happen with that? Will will there will, will we be required to, to give away our encryption keys or what? If um, the end-to-end -end encryption is handled by the provider. For example, if you're using a, a WhatsApp or Signal, or even if you are using Proton Mail, that will um, automatically encrypt uh, the emails you send. In that case, they will still have to do the searching. So they will have to backdoor the encryption. They will okay. either have to switch it off or they will need to change their technology to screen before encrypting the message. So basically, um, they would do the, the, the screening on your device. If you're using an app, they would be doing the screening on your device before sending the message. And that's a, a backdooring encryption. Encryption is no longer safe because you can't be sure that the algorithm will send uh, uh, disclose your content unencrypted. And it sets a precedent for law enforcement, for intelligence agencies, uh, even for industry to ask for this screening to be used for other purposes, for lawful interception, for uh, intelligence uh, purposes to, to look for, um, I don't know, whatever risks to national security to look for copyright violations. So once um, this end-to-end -end encryption has been backdoored, there is no uh, a stop to asking for this backdoor to be used um, mm -hmm. for other purposes. If you um, encrypt a message yourself, um, then of course it it won't be this chat control will not find any any criminally uh, uh, suspicious uh, content, and that will be used by criminals because those <laughs> criminals who run these uh, child porn rings they operate um, usually hidden uh, uh, self operated servers and forums. Uh, which will, of course, not implement chat control. The only way to uh, prosecute those 
that do sexually abuse children and produce this material is to um, basically covert uh, investigations to um, infiltrate those networks. That requires a lot of human intelligence and can't be done by chat control algorithms. And furthermore, um, the way that they seem to be sharing the material from what I read in public reports is basically they upload archives of images and videos to public file hosters, but it's encrypted archives. And uh, therefore, if the hoster applies uh, the screening, they will not find anything because the file is encrypted. And when they, they share the link to, um, to the archive and the password to it, then um, for one thing, they share it on forums that don't apply trash control. And for the other thing, even if they use commercial services, they are just posting a link and a password. So no algorithm can tell that this link points to a, a criminal material. And that means in effect that the whole mechanism is useless against those that actually abuse children and produce this material. And that's what we need to focus on to stop um, sexual abuse, to stop the production of this material. Because once it has been uh, produced, it's not possible technologically to prevent its circulation. This is simply not possible to effectively prevent it. So we need to focus on protecting the children and preventing the production of this material. So uh, if, if uh, someone uses end-to-end -end crypt uh, encryption or self-hosted um, uh, servers, mail servers, that they cannot be reached by, by chat control. Is, is that a, that just seems to be a pretty big hole in in, in this, uh, this idea? Well, it's true that if you operate a node yourself, be it a mail server or being, be it a, I don't know, a, a Fediverse node or be it um, a signal, a, a matrix, uh, a messenger server, um, you are not covered unless you provide the service to the public for remuneration hmm. so it needs to be uh, uh, covered would be public services and only if they have a commercial background be using advertising or some money uh, coming in so these services are not covered but the problem is as soon as you send your message to another uh, person um, and they use uh, uh, major commercial services they use uh, a commercial matrix node or a commercial email server uh, then your message will still be screened. And that's why um, this exemption is not, does not effectively protect legitimate um, conversation. Mm. Uh, I noticed that um, uh, the new German government uh, is, is quite negative to, to chat control. Will it be possible for Germany to stop chat control in the council? First, we need to make sure that they want to stop it. There is a clear commitment in the coalition agreement that they oppose the scanning of private communications. And um, <coughs> uh, technically, Germany does not have the votes to block this. But in, in practice, uh, if Germany opposes application to private messages, they are likely to find allies to, uh, um, to, to change this proposal. But we are not yet sure what exactly the German uh, position is because they've welcomed the proposal as such. And um, uh, uh, we need to, to put them under pressure to oppose this. But then most of all, we need other countries to, to report about these plans and um, to uh, uh, protest against the end of the secrecy of uh, digital uh, correspondence. This is as, as if the post office was opening and scanning all letters. That's just a massive violation of the very idea of secrecy of correspondence. Uh, any, any other member states are, are opposing this proposal? There has been criticism in Austria. <laughs> I don't know what their <coughs> actual um, position is. There has been criticism uh, against backdooring of encryption from, um, 
from some more member states. But um, even if this was applied only to unencrypted messages, it's still um, mass surveillance of personal communications that is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Um, so is there anything else when it comes to chat control that uh, you think we should mention that I haven't talked about? Well, I think um, uh, what is under, what hasn't been discussed properly is for one thing that they propose a mandatory age verification for all communication services. And in practice, this would require identification of users. So uh, in the case of journalists, of whistleblowers, of uh, uh, many uh, um, democracy defenders, um, uh, lawyers, etc., they need to be able to <coughs> communicate anonymously and they need to be able to receive information anonymously. And with this age verification in place, there is a risk that you can no longer um, uh, communicate anonymously, which is a catastrophe. And secondly, what's, what's completely underreported is um, the proposal basically says, if there is a risk that a messaging app could be used for child grooming, and basically every messaging app could be used for that purpose, then uh, app stores may not allow minors to install these apps. So that would essentially mean that people uh, age 17 would no longer be able to use WhatsApp. They wouldn't be able to use uh, a signal or um, online games or uh, a dating apps. They wouldn't be able to use <laughs> any service that you can use to communicate with. And I'm not sure that all young people understand this and the implications um, of this horrible proposal. Um, this has nothing to do with empowering young people or even protecting them. This would actually criminalize them and patronize them. And that's why I think that young people should be the first to say, you are doing this in our name, we don't want it. Mm. And I guess um, the right to anonymity is not, it's not just for, for journalists and whistleblowers, etc. It, it's a part of the right to privacy, to private communication, as it's enshrined in the European Convention of Human Rights. Yes, full support um, for that. Actually, uh, anonymity protects your data. Um, if you need to identify uh, towards some internet companies, it's only a matter of time before your data is leaked and it can be abused. It can be used for identity theft or for, for criminal purposes. So anonymity actually keeps you safe online.